another dark age, just like they're shutting down power plants, just like they're shutting down new engine factories and new technology companies. It's called disruptive technology. I have a family member who develops new drugs, and they came up with an ancient medicinal that totally clots blood flow and cuts, and they were told, this is a disruptive technology, we're not going to let this come to market. That's what we deal with here. Whether it's music, technology, art, doesn't matter. Only the insiders and their dirtbag kids and people get to have stuff seen by the public. Just like it was in Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. You didn't get to have your play go out to the public or your music go out unless your wife got down and performed fellatio on the Nazi officer over that or the Soviet officer. And that's... The opposite of freedom, and that's what I declare war on here today. A bunch of control freak bastards controlling our lives. I'm sorry, it's a family show, but that's what they are. They are not from humanity. They were born of corruption, not of this species, and I'm sick of them. A bunch of control freaks. So there's that article. Continuing, House Republicans look to strip the TSA screeners of their officer title which is finally a move in the right direction. You know, the FBI can't go to a park and randomly grab your wife's genitals, or your son's genitals, or your genitals. And they're, they're under supposedly the Bill of Rights Constitution. They can't do that. So how did they create 10 years ago a federal agency that takes control, sticks their hands down your pants, puts you in microwave ovens, and churn off the former head of Homeland Security makes money off of it? How do they do that? They just announced this. And Congress is pointing out, along with law enforcement and constitutional scholars, that this is like handing out badges to just people on the street and saying, you're now cops. They're not even having badges. And they're saying, you're not going to have 10 badges anymore. You're not going to have uh, this name officer. You're not a sworn. You know, when a cop has to go sign up and pay money to be bonded to be a peace officer, doesn't mean they're perfect either, but it's a big deal. You're now swearing to the people, I'm going to uphold this. And you got to put money up in case you violate what you're your duty is. But we just take all these people, pay a minimum wage, and I had one of them say, I'm going to stick my hands down your pants in Las Vegas because it's my administrative privilege. So I've got a clip here from what uh, the uh, famous uh, movie, in fact, I, yeah, that's right, Treasure of the Sierra Madre is my grandfather's favorite movie. I watched it with him before he died at the hospital. Th this movie, <laughs> you've seen it in uh, some comedy films like Badges. We don't need no stinking badges. But to hear it is from the original uh, 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 film where they're talking about, hey, badges, we don't need no stinking badges. Well, the TSA, they've got badges, but they were just given to them. No training, no nothing. They just trample over everyone. Yeah, it's the treasure of the Sierra Madres. Famous uh, film, of course. Um, in fact, I'm having a senile moment. Who's the guy in the Maltese Falcon? Humphrey Bogart's in it. Let's go ahead and go to this clip of the TSA, because I guarantee you, after they strip him of the officer name and the badge and the bonded officer of the state court or the federal court, they're just going to say, you know, used to you had to have military officers commissioned by Congress because they wouldn't trust the president to appoint his own military people. Why? Because the president could become a dictator separation of powers. Now it's just all hand out badges to everybody. Let them, let them strip search granny over and over again. Same thing with the TSA. Uh, listen, I'm going to stick my hands down your five-year-old daughter's pants and grab her genitalia. Uh, Miss USA, we're going to grab her vagina as well. It's freedom. It's stopping Al-Qaeda. This old lady here on an oxygen tank, we're going to strip her down. Keeping you safe. Everything's fine. we got a microwave oven here that doesn't even protect you, but it's all right. We're going to do it. This is what's going on in this country. So people are waking up to the fact that uh, their stinking badges are made up. Now continuing and moving right along, Bush press secretary calls Ron Paul nuts following 911 Glee comments. And Ron Paul basically came out uh, to Ari Fleischer. Anyway, he made the point that Bush was gleeful and it's been confirmed they wanted to attack Iraq within minutes of 9-11 and blame all these enemies and take domestic rights and that there have been reports that Bush and, and Cheney were happy about it. Marvin Bush gave a speech admitting it. We filmed in Austin. So all of this has gone on and Ron Paul comes out and says, think of what happened after 9-11. The minute before there was any assessment, there was glee in the administration because now we can invade Iraq. And so the war drums beat, Paul said. That's exactly what they're doing now with Iran. 
see, it's the idea of people that have products and ideas who want to be friends with everybody and engage in commerce versus those that just want to attack everybody. And the American ideal of George Washington is be friends with everybody unless they attack you. Well, the globalists just attack themselves and then say a foreign enemy did it. So there's that report, and uh, the clown is Ari Fleischer working for known war criminals on record. Uh, continuing, Ron Paul dominates favorable Twitter election coverage. We've got a report on that. He overall, uh, if you scan Twitter, is the overall uh, positive person. He's won all the major straw polls. And, of course, he is the favorite to win Iowa right now. So Mother Jones and other George Soros banker-run, fake liberal, fascistic sites have come out and said, well, just don't worry. You know, if Ron Paul wins in Iowa, it's a fluke. Just just, just never mind him. In fact, I was watching Slimeball Chris Matthews in there during the break uh, on MSNBC, and he was saying, oh, well, Ron Paul may be in second place in Iowa or first place, but he is not even credible, so let's just not look at him. Bunch of political sold out whores say, don't look at Ron Paul. Well, you want to look there immediately. Okay, well, that, I let that play through for that little part about Ron Paul because uh, it's pretty significant. Ron Paul is the only one now, and with the exception of Ralph Nader, he's the only one who's told the truth in the approaching uh, days before any of the last major elections. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the comments or the lot of philosophies that Ron Paul has about social programs. He doesn't think they should exist. He does admit that, you know, we need to phase them out slowly. We can't just chop it off and leave people hanging. But uh, I'm confident that he can be persuaded with an intellectual argument on that subject. In the meantime, uh, the, the poop is really hitting the fan nationally, and uh, we like I was saying just before we went into this clip, all the things we've been warning people about and whether or not we actually were confident that they'd actually happen, it, it doesn't matter now because now they're happening. They're actually activating the FEMA camps, and I see they called them internment specialists, not detention specialists, internment <coughs> specialists. And uh, the cover story is that they're using it for ICE, the uh, immigration and whatever whatever ICE stands for, their acronyms are all over the place. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> well, I'm going to change gears a little bit and get back to 9-11, even though all this is a direct result of using 9-11 to cheat the system. Um, one of the most significant things, I mean, there are lots and lots of, of facts and anomalies that should persuade a scientifically oriented observer. However, most of the people that talk about 9-11 have no background in science, and so you tell them, the, you know, the iron-rich microspheres discovered by three agencies, including FEMA and the USGS, uh, you know, to give it some credibility, those are proof of thermite. There is no other explanation for them. and. Even if you go to websites that supposedly debunk 9-11, they still don't have any scientific basis for doing that. But you have to take it on faith if you don't have a scientific background. To avoid doing that, I recommend that you take a look at the video we're about to show. It's the David Chandler, uh, from the David Chandler 9-11 Analysis DVD. And uh, it's... It's something that you can see with your own eyes. There should be, if the official story about 9-11 is anywhere near correct, there would be no explosives. There would be no explosive residue for us to point at, but again, we don't. you have to take our word for it that that's explosive rev residue and proof of, you know, government activity. But in this video you're about to see, with your own eyes, you're going to see pieces of the building out into space, already blowing out into space, and then they blow up in front of your eyes, right there, and separate into multiple pieces, and the multiple pieces go off and blow up into more pieces. And right there, you can't argue your way out of that. There is no explanation that allows explosives to be in that building. <clears throat> Furthermore, you see debris all around the building, falling at gravity speed, and then you see something out 
stripping that speed, just racing right past with a white trailing smoke behind it. It's kind of a projectile that's been accelerated by an explosive. You can't fall faster than gravity without having a push from something. So watch this video and it should convince even the most skeptical there should be no explosives. The fact that you see them with your own eyes should be enough for you to demand and support a new 9-11 investigation. In the previous video, I showed, I focused on a uh, projectile that, would, that made a right angle turn. And I talked about how there had to be an impulse. This is fact. It has to have an impulse of some kind. But it was hard to see exactly what was happening. And so I looked for other videos that had the same projectile in it. And I found one that was, uh, I guess, clear enough that I could sort of see what was happening, but it wasn't very easy to display. So I haven't made a video about that, but my speculation, and if, it's not just speculation, my uh, assessment at this stage is that uh, what was actually doing the right turn, it was a composite um, uh, object that broke apart, and in throwing one part to one side, the other part took the right angle turn. So it was actually ejecting a subset of itself rather than just say ejecting gases. Okay, in the process of looking for that, I actually was distracted by a different projectile that, uh, in fact, there's a number of these. I just picked the one that was the clearest. I actually saw a projectile that exploded and it basically split, and then each of the parts split again. So let's watch this one. This is the South Tower of the World Trade Center viewed from the southeast. As it falls, it tips toward the camera. Notice that as the skeleton of the roof line partially emerges from the dust, there are a number of smoking projectiles that look like comets. A number of these objects undergo explosions. Watch the comet-like object at the far right in slow motion. It is the most easily viewed because it shows up against the blue sky. Let's take it one frame at a time. Here we see it flaring. A fragment is ejected to the left. Now the fragment itself splits apart. Let's go back to the earlier explosion. Note that another fragment is being shot down and to the right. It also undergoes a secondary explosion. These explosions may seem small, but the fact that there are explosions at all confirms the presence of explosives in the building. Okay, I was just doing some stuff in the control room there. Well, I see we don't have the lights very well. I didn't organize the light all that well out here. Anyway, uh, we're seat of the pantsing it sometimes on the show. The, the content is what's important. Now we're going to open up the phone lines. Uh, I have an, another video while we're waiting for calls. This is uh, Eric Lawyer, the firefighter. He's a member of Firefighters for 9-11 Truth. And I played this clip before, but he really sums up what was wrong with the forensic investigation, you know, the, the lack of it, I should say. So while you're getting ready to call in at 288-4442 or 288-4448, here's an eight-minute video, and 